Hi, my name is Manish Gupta, and in this video, I'm going to talk about OpenAI's Instruct GPT, which is a way of training language models to follow instructions with human feedback. So the first question to ask is why large language models do not align with user intent? Uh, well, uh, by user intent, what do I mean? Uh, I mean uh, you, uh, explicit intents or implicit intent. So explicit in intents mean following instructions or implicit intents mean, uh, mean, mean uh, staying uh, truthful, not being biased, toxic, or otherwise harmful or offensive in nature. So why can't today's general language models do that? Uh, the main reason is that the language modeling objective for most large language models uh, like GPT, uh, like, like various versions of GPT, has been to predict the next token, which is actually very different from the objective uh, of uh, following the user's instructions helpfully and safely. Right? That is the reason why these large language models do not align with user intent. Uh, but what we want uh, a la large language models to do is the following. We want them to be helpful. Uh, they should help the users solve their task, right? We want them to be honest. They shouldn't fabricate information. They should not hallucinate or mislead the user, right? And lastly, they should be harmless and not be offensive or toxic in nature. They should not cause physical, psychological, or social harm to people or the environment at all, okay? Um, then the obvious question is, if today's large language models do, do not align with this user intent, then they are not really practically usable, right? And then the next question is, can we really do some special fine tuning uh, of these models so as to make them align with user intent? Uh, maybe fine tune with human feedback, right? The answer is in Instruct GPT. Uh, on this slide, I sort of show how these Instruct GPT models have been trained by OpenAI. Right? They have been trained in three steps. Uh, step one is supervised fine tuning. Step two is reward model training and the step three is reinforcement learning via proximal policy optimization on the reward model. Okay. Let's talk about them one by one. So in the first step, as you see, the idea is to collect demonstration data and train a supervised policy. Now, what does that mean? Okay. The idea is as follows. Uh, you start with the GPT-3 model, the pre-trained GPT-3 model, right? and then you collect a whole bunch of data, uh, a whole bunch of prompt related data. So in fact, OpenAI collected a whole bunch of prompt related data that was uploaded on their API. They also collected a lot of prompt data from human labelers. And then you ask the human labelers to demonstrate the desired output behavior. So the human labelers were asked, hey, if this is the prompt, this is the question, then how will you solve the, how will you, what, what will be the answer that you will provide? And this kind of data was used to do fine tuning in the first stage. So the first step is basically about doing supervised fine tuning using human labeled output for prompts which are human generated or submitted by people on their API, right? customer prompts that is. Right? The step two is basically learning a reward model to be used in step three by the reinforcement learning, uh, reinforcement learning step. Right? So to learn the reward model, the idea is that uh, you have the supervised fine tuned model already trained in step one. You essentially take a prompt and several model outputs are sampled. So you have this SFT trained model. Right? You have a prompt coming in. You take several outputs from this SFT model and then give these outputs to human labelers. You ask human labelers to rank which ones are better than the others. Right? This ranking is basically the reward model. Right? So a labeler, a human labeler actually takes these outputs from the SFT fine-tuned model, the supervised fine-tuned model, and then a human labeler actually ranks the outputs from best to worst. Right. So essentially, for example, here there are four possible outputs A, B, C, D coming from the from the SFT model. Uh, the human labeler says that D is better than C, C is better than A, and A and B are almost the same. Now this data is used to train our reward model. The separate model, you train it, train a reward model based on this data. Uh, third step, uh, what happens? Okay. In the third step, you optimize a policy against the reward model using reinforcement learning. Okay. So reinforcement learning is this way of learning where the idea is that uh, um, the the agent essentially or the, the model right in this particular case has a certain policy it tries to come up with certain outputs and then a human labeler gives them a reward saying hey you perform good or you perform bad depending on that reward the agent has to update its policy in the hope of being able to learn an optimal policy a good policy towards the end right so same thing is used here so a new prompt is sampled from the data set and then the uh, model is actually asked, uh, model or the policy is asked to generate an output. 
once an output is generated, you know, the reward model that you trained in step two is actually used to score how well the model did in terms of generating the output. Now, this reward from the reward model is then used using the PPO, the proximal policy optimization procedure, which is a reinforcement learning procedure to update the model. Okay, so that's how instead GPD models have been trained in three different steps. In fact, steps two and step three have been done in an iterative manner. So you could basically update your reward model based on uh, the new um, the new uh, proximal policy optimized model that you obtain. So, you know, of course you initialize using the SFT pre-trained SFT train model, but then, you know, after step three, you have a better model. So yes, you can actually update your reward model also and so on. So steps two and three can be done iteratively. Okay. What data sets were used and what models were used to train uh, Instruct GPT? Well, uh, Instruct GPT is trained on prompt data as you realize, uh, you know, by my description for the previous three steps on the previous slide, right? So these prompts actually come from two sources. Uh, they have either prompts submitted to Open A OpenAI API. They are actually called as uh, uh, customer support supplied prompts, or they are actually prompts which are manually curated by 40 different labelers. They are called as labeler generated prompts. Okay. Um, in fact, uh, this, this this prompt data set is then divided into three parts uh, used for the three different steps: SFT, RM, and PPO. <coughs> So the SFT prompts actually have labeler demonstrations, right? So labeler actually provides what the ideal output should look like, right? Uh, the, uh, uh, the, uh, the prompts which are used for RM, uh, reward model learning, are the prompts where labeler actually supplies the rankings of model outputs, right? So they, they have to have those kinds of labels from the labelers, right? PPO prompts actually require no labels, no human labels are required, right? Uh, the prompt data set is more or less uh, English, so it's uh, around 96% English, and therefore it may or may not generalize that well on other languages. Uh, here is the split of the data uh, across uh, uh, SFT, RM, and PPO. So as you see, the size of these data sets is not very large. It's not like in millions and so on. It's basically just a few tens of thousands of prompts have been used to train these kinds of models. Uh, if you look at uh, the prompts, uh, uh, you know, these prompts are mostly around generative tasks, but hey, there are some prompts which also deal with other kinds of tasks uh, like like open uh, question answering, brainstorming, chatting, uh, uh, you know, chatbot kind of stuff, uh, rewriting, summarization and so on. Here are a few examples of those prompts. So brainstorming prompt is more of a more of a open uh, question kind of prompt. So list five ideas for how to regain enthusiasm for my career, right? Um, so while the generation based prompts are more like write a short story on 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 some kind of a situation and so on. Okay. Um, as we discussed in the previous slide, well, the base model is GPT-3, so they started with GPT-3, but then they did uh, um, SFT, supervised fine tuning for 16 epochs uh, using cosine learning rate DK. Right. Uh, the second step was, uh, uh, re was reward model training, but then that was also done in a very, very optimized manner. So the way this was done was for a particular uh, uh, prompt, you sample anywhere from four to nine responses from the model and you get them judged by human labelers. So you get all KC2 comparisons so that, and, and you take all of those comparisons and feed them in a single batch so that uh, you compute the forward pass uh, through GPT-3 only once uh, for each of those outputs, right? So batching them in a single uh, single batch, all, all 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 outputs related to one prompt in a single batch makes it super optimized. Yeah, and then the third step is of course to train your PPO model using reinforcement learning and PPO uh, approach. However, they also train a PPO PTX model. Now this model is um, uh, uh, is a model which is regularized with pre-training gradients. Now the point was as follows. If they just did PPO, they found that the uh, GPT-3 model, which is obtained after you apply PPO, uh, called as the PPO model or the Instruct GPT model, that model actually regressed on some of those uh, benchmark uh, generative benchmark tasks. And therefore, they said that, hey, uh, let it not forget the original training. And therefore, let's just also mix the pre-training gradients with PPO gradients and uh, therefore avoid the performance regressions on public NLP data sets. Okay. So that's called as PPO PTX. So PPO, PPO and PPO PTX models are both instruct GPT models in some ways. Okay. Well, in their paper, they compared with the GPT-3 as well as GPT-3 prompted model. Now, what is GPT-3 prompted? Well, GPT-3 prompted is a nice version of GPT-3. So it's GPT-3, which is provided with a few short prefix to prompt it into following into an instruction following mode. So you instruct it to be, uh, to, you basically instruct it nicely using free short, uh, a few short, uh, a few short prefixes in the prompt. So it's more like you know enough amount of uh, prompt engineering done so as to make GPT-3 look good. 
Okay, so that's the GPT three prompted model. Now, how do the results look like, right? How does Instruct GPT compare with GPT three? So uh, they got labeling done from human labelers and found that uh, labelers significantly prefer Instruct GPT outputs over outputs from GPT three. Okay. So um, uh, this chart basically shows you win rate against a supervised fine tuned 175 billion model. Remember, this is the model after step one. Okay? And X axis shows model size. So they trained models of three different sizes 1.3 billion, 6 billion, and 175 billion. Okay? What you see here are these baselines. So GPT-3 uh, GPT and GPT-3 prompted. So as you observe, 50% uh, is, of course, uh, you know, uh, where you say that, hey, one model is better than the other or not. So if you look at SFT, clearly uh, smaller versions of SFT are worse than uh, the 175 billion version SFT. But then uh, a very interesting point to observe is that even a 1.3 billion PPO or PPO PTX model is better compared to a 175 billion parameter SFT model. That's where uh, uh, you know that is that is where you you start seeing awesomeness, right? So uh, so it has 100x fewer parameters, but still the model is better, right? So in fact, outputs from the one so if you look at the 175 billion PPO model, well, uh, they are preferred to the 175 GPT-3 175 billion GPT-3 model. This one uh, around 85% of the times, and actually preferred around 71% of the times. Uh, um, you know, uh, compared to the few short GPT-3, uh, compared to the few short GPT-3 uh, um, GPT-3 prompted model. Okay. In fact, uh, labelers also gave this subjective feedback that uh, instruct GPT models uh, generate more appropriate outputs, uh, uh, which are more reliably, which more reliably follow explicit constraints given in the instruction. Uh, not just the models perform nicely, they are more truthful. Instruct GPT models are more truthful and less toxic. So uh, evaluation was done across several kinds of criteria. Uh, you know, as you see, this is the various criteria that were used for getting human evaluation done. So does the model hallucinate? Does the model contain violent content, adult content? Uh, you know, does it give harmful advice, expresses opinion, expresses moral, moral judgment? And the idea is that models are not supposed to express moral judgments, right? They're supposed to be objective in nature fails to discourage violence, abuse, terrorism, and so on. And then what people found in general is that uh, instruct GPT models are about twice as truthful compared to GPT-3, half as hallucinatory, and 25% fewer toxic outputs than GPT-3. Okay? There are more details in these charts here. You see you know, typically PPO, PP, PPO, PTX models, which are instruct GPT models. They actually uh, attempt, to, uh, have, uh, attempt to follow correct instruction, um, and follow explicit constraints also are less hallucinatory, half as hallucinatory almost compared to GPT, right? And then they are also more suitable uh, to act as, uh, um, you know, uh, uh, act as customer assistants. Okay, so that's the uh, good part about Instruct GPT. In fact, here are a few examples to show how Instruct GPT is better than GPT-3. This is an example where you are talking about code. So here is the prompt. What is the purpose of the list C in the code uh, below? So this is a C code and uh, or other list C, and you're asking, sorry, uh, in, in this Python code, you're asking, what is the purpose of this list C, right? Now, you know, GPT-3 does come up with some outputs, but they are not so meaningful, right? While Instruct GPT does come up with a pretty, pretty reasonable output, uh, although it's not quite correct, but it does come up with pretty reasonable output, okay? Similarly, if you look at another prompt uh, about recipes, so here is a, sh uh, you know, the question is to create a shopping list from this recipe, right? And uh, uh, this is a labeler demonstration. So this is what the human labeler said. Hey, these are the things that you need, man, from the recipe, right? Um, but uh, if you look at GPT-3, uh, 175 billion model, it tells you that this is what is required. It does come up with things like at 350 degrees and for 20, 25 minutes, which are not really parts of a recipe. But if you look at instruct GPT results, well, look at these results. It's so nice. I mean, it actually not just tells you what is required, but also how much of each of these things is required. Way better compared to just the GPT-3 completion. Okay. Now, instant GPT is not uh, all good and all rosy, rosy, right? So there are issues. It does make even simple mistakes, right? So um, when the original prompt has a mistake uh, or or it has a false premise, the model incorrectly assumes the premise to be true. For example, why is it important to eat socks after meditating? Really, I mean, you know, so so you know, whatever GPT-3 does, it does whatever it does, right? You read it, it's very very funny, right? 
but instead gpt actually uh, starts to believe that yes whatever the instruction is given must be correct let me try to somehow come up with an answer to explain it and so on right there's no clear answer to this question but there are many theories and so on and so forth so yeah it sort of tries to uh, assume that the question has the correct premise and try to answer that one yeah the second problem is it cannot it can overly hedge right so when given a simple question it uh, sometimes tries to say hey there is no there is no uh, way to accurately predict there is no single answer to it and so on uh, even when there is a fairly simple answer for example what happens if we fire a cannonball directly at a pumpkin at high speed well the pumpkin should explode there is one simple answer right typically but then it comes up with several several roundabout uh, uh, ways of explaining this this stuff right Lastly, GPT does not really work that well when the logical chain of reasoning in the original uh, constraint or the instruction is pretty large, right? So when there are multiple explicit constraints, for example, list ten movies made in 1930s set in France, or write a summary in a specified number of sentences, uh, it doesn't really that work that well, right? Oftentimes, it ends up uh, with uh, with uh, you know sentence. Uh, if you say give me 300 words essay on something, well, it may just abruptly end even without finishing the sentence at the end sometimes. Yeah. So overall, in this video, we started to talk about human in the loop training to align the large language models with user intent, right? And I think Instruct GPT from OpenAI is one of those first few approaches. So OpenAI Instruct GPT are models trained to actually follow instructions with human feedback. Uh, we observed that uh, uh, the Instruct GPT 100x smaller model could actually outperform GPT-3 and lead to more truthful and less toxic generations, thereby saying that maybe uh, just going large is probably not the answer right maybe it is important to have models trained in a better manner so as to be able to incorporate human feedback and human instructions more effectively uh, in fact uh, the instruct gpt version of uh, way of thinking has become very popular at openai openai itself basically says that the text davinci 002 model which is a revised version of instruct gpt is basically their default language model on openai api I have myself played around with this uh, text DaVinci 002 um, API on the, the playground API, and I found it to be really, really uh, useful across a wide bunch of use cases. So if you have not done that, you know, please feel free to pay, play around with, uh, with, with this API on beta.openai.com. Yeah. So hopefully you liked the video. Thanks for watching. Uh, connect with me on my LinkedIn there, or look at my research on my homepage. Thank you so much.